going for three for three today. This is my third voiceover. This is the last PowerPoint of Unit 7. We still are going to have a quiz over these PowerPoints, Chapter 16 and 19, and then we have one more unit and we are done with the macro uh, part of the course. But this PowerPoint is called Deficits, Surpluses, and the Public Debt. Public debt is the total accumulation of each year's deficits minus surpluses the federal government has incurred through time. The federal budget deficit is found by subtracting government tax revenues from government spending in a particular year. The public debt is held as treasury bills, treasury notes, treasury bonds, and U.S. savings bonds. Factors that cause public debt would be war. During wars, government expenditures increase. Of course, three options are available to finance the spending. They could increase taxes, which would hurt the incentive to work. They could print money, which would cause high inflation. They could borrow the funds. In recessions, um, oh, recessions are <laughs> another factor that causes public debt. When national incomes decline, tax revenues decline. Tax cuts account for much of the growing debt since 1980, and Congress failed to cut spending. Understanding the national debt besides my blubbering. Some economists argue that the debt, although big, is nothing to worry about. The debt to GDP ratio. A wealthy, highly productive nation can incur and carry a large public debt more easily than a poor nation can. It is more meaningful to measure the national debt in relation to our GDP. Although the U.S. has the world's largest public debt, a number of other nations have larger debts as percentage of their GDPs, and they are fine. Sensing propaganda. There's a nice little chart for you. Memorize it. There'll be a quiz over it. There'll be a quiz over this. All the presidents and the debts and very fascinating historically. Understanding the national debt. Interest payments. The primary burden of the debt is the annual interest charged on debt. This interest must be paid each year and thus leaks budgetary funds that could go to other programs. Interest payments are now the fourth largest item in the federal budget. A student asked me about the interest and I happen to know the answer that that is a portion of the budget. However, 75% of the debt is owed to Americans. That interest goes to us and is consumed. Public Debt Ownership 2004. Debt outside the Federal Reserve and government agencies. Debt held by Federal Reserve and government agencies. Federal Reserve. U.S. government agencies. U.S. individuals. Foreign ownership. Foreigners hold $3.5 trillion. U.S. banks and financial institutions. Other state and local governments. False concerns about the debt. Bankruptcy. The federal government will not go bankrupt for two good reasons. Print money. They can print Paper to buy back its bonds. Paper. Taxation. The government can increase taxes to pay interest payments or the principal of the public debt. Refinancing. The government refinances the debt by selling new bonds to pay off maturing bonds. Burdening future generations. The debt is not a future burden since 75% of the debt is owned by American citizens. It is a liability to Americans as taxpayers and an asset to Americans as investors. By paying off the debt, we would just be transferring money from Americans to Americans. Only the foreign-owned portion of the debt would negatively impact U.S. purchasing power. Real concerns about the debt. Income distribution. Most of the ownership of the public debt is concentrated among the wealthier Americans who are citizens that buy stocks and bonds. Thus, paying off the debt would transfer income from lower-income taxpayers to higher-income people. Increasing the nation's income in inequalities. Real concerns about the debt again. Incentives. 
Large debt hurts economic growth. As the debt grows, the interest paid on it will grow. Government spending must be cut or taxes must increase to pay that interest. Either action will dampen economic growth. Foreign owned public debt. Interest payments to debt owners outside the U.S. enables foreigners to buy from a more economic output. Thus, the U.S. transfers goods and services to foreign lenders. For a large public debt results in higher interest rates, which, inc which will reduce gross investment. The most likely way that public debt burdens future generations, if at all, is by reducing the current level of investment. Aren't you relieved? You see the crowding out effect. Philosophies of the budget. I'm sure you're familiar with this image. Number one, annually balanced budget. Fiscal conservatives favor an annually balanced budget primarily because they believe deficit financing leads to an undesirable expansion of the public sector of the economy. A balanced budget amendment would require decreased government spending or increased taxes in recessionary periods. If government adhered strictly to an annually balanced budget, the government's budget would intensify the business cycle. There's G guy. There's the cycle. Cyclically balanced budget. Run deficits in recessions and surpluses during expansion so the budget is balanced, not each year, but over the course of the business cycle. The government could conduct counter-cyclical fiscal policy and balance its budget over a period of years. A major criticism of cyclically balanced budget is that upswings and downswings of the business cycle are not always of equal magnitude and duration. Number three, functional finance, balancing the economy, not the budget. It views the public budget primarily as a way to stabilize the economy. The important thing is to provide for non-inflationary, full employment, and ensure the economy produces its potential GDP. If there are chronic deficits or surpluses, so be it. Deficits are minor problems compared to inflation or recessions.